Hey guys, it's Marco again. Today with a late fire mage guide for patch 9.2. This guide will be shorter than frost mage one, just because fire mages won't have big playstyle changes when you acquire double legendary and the set. We'll be going through a lot of topics, but you will have timestamps to check certain sections of the video. And make sure to check if the like button is blue and if you subscribe to the channel. That's all the support that I need. If you want to help me further, you can visit my Patreon page where I offer perks for support, such as coaching. Now the difference between Frost and Fire in this patch is the fact that Fire Mages didn't get any changes. The only time when your rotation changes is with 4P set. The change will make this pack a bit easier but crazier to play during your combustion windows. So if you already know how to play Fire and you followed my old Ventir and Night Fae guy for patch 9.1.5, you won't have a lot of issues with the new things. Okay, so my basics in this video will be a bit different. I will focus on normal rotation and pure basics of the spec. Then I will teach you how to do a proper combustion. Proper combustion means that you achieve a good amount of pyroblasts inside of it. I find fire mages to be quite easy as well. They're harder to play than frost mages since their most important part is their burst and you can sometimes fail it and that fail is gonna cost you a lot. But before we start with the burst, you need to get to know the core abilities of fire mages. Fireball is your go-to spammable ability. It does moderate damage to the target and each time it fails to critically hit, the next fireball has 10% increased chance to critically hit. Fire Blast is an instant cast ability which is on a completely different GCD compared to your other spells. You can use this ability while casting other spells and this ability will always critically hit. You got two stacks of this ability and three if you're using a talent. Scorch is another spammable ability which you don't want to use unless you have to move or if you're talented into Searing Touch. You can move when using this ability and Searing Touch talent makes your Scorches do more damage and guarantees them a critical hit when you hit a target under 30% HP. Pyroblast is your hardest hitting ability, you usually don't want to hard cast it since it has a 4 second long casting time. But the whole point of Fire Mage is to cast as much of these as instant casts. This is made possible by your passive, Hot Streak. Hot Streak makes your Pyroblast or Flame Strike an instant cast if you manage to get 2 critical hits in a row with your direct Fire Mage spells. That's how you instantly pop Pyroblasts. Another passive is tied to your mastery stat and that's Ignite. Your target burns for additional percent of the damage caused by the majority of your abilities. You can spread your Ignite by using another instant cast spell which has a 30 seconds cooldown and that spell is Phoenix Flames. Flame Strike is another spammable ability but this time it's an AoE ability for fire mages. However, you can't benefit from Hot Streak passive with Flame Strike because it's not a direct hit. Fire Mages only have two basic cooldowns and the Covenant cooldown. Shorter and less impactful cooldown is the Rune of Power. Rune of Power increases your spell power damage by 40% when you're standing in it. This helps you a lot with your burst windows. And one thing to pay attention to is that Rune of Power has a bigger size than the actual effect on the ground, so don't be scared to move away from it. Combustion is a spark which creates fire. This is the most important thing for Fire Mages and one of the most impactful cooldowns in the history of the game. When you combust, all of your fire spells will critically hit and all of your critical strike rating will transform into mastery with 50% of the value. You do the majority of your damage during your combustion window, so it's important to use it optimally. Basically, your general simple rotation outside of the cooldowns is spamming either Fireball or Scorch or flame strike, depending on the fight. When you get a critical strike with your fireball or scorch, you can decide if you want to use your fire blast to finish your hot streak for an instant pyroblast. Now for the juicy part, combustion. You want to start your combustion with a sufficient number of fire blasts and that's the part which most fire mages fail. You want to have fire blasts to keep up your pyroblast going. That's why you need to plan on saving your fire blasts before starting your combustion. I like to have 2.5 fire blast stacks when I'm about to start my next combustion. Important thing about combustion in this expansion is that we're always using Infernal Cascade Conduit. Infernal Cascade gives you a buff 
every time you cast Fire Blast during your combustion. Each Fire Blast gives you a percent fire damage increase for 5 seconds and this buff stacks up to 2 times. It's of utmost importance that you maintain this buff during your whole combustion. I will now demonstrate the combustion, I will slow down the video so you can more easily follow it. You usually start all of your combustions with Fireball. While you are casting your Fireball, you want to hit your combustion window when you are nearing the end of your Fireball cast. After that, you want to hit your Fire Blast twice to instantly gain Hot Streak and two stacks of Infernal Cascade. At the end of the Fireball cast, you should have your Hot Streak ready and you follow it up with an instant Pyroblast. This is the hardest part of the Fire Mage rotation. You will have to practice this in order to get it down perfectly. After the first Pyroblast, you're instantly following that Pyroblast with another Pyroblast. Because you will build your Hot Streak from Pyroblast and Fireball hit. You follow it with Phoenix Flames, then Pyroblast. Notice that your Infernal Cascade buff is dropping. That's why you will Fire Blast to refresh the buff into another Pyroblast. Then you again want to do another Phoenix Flames into Pyroblast. Once again, you will have to refresh your Infernal Cascade buff with Fire Blast into Pyroblast, followed by last Phoenix Flames into Pyroblast. And now, depending on your haste, time warp, if you get power infusion, you can get more Pyroblasts and more Fire Blasts inside of your combustion. We're done with the basics and you can rewatch them how many times you want. And now let's see the talents. For talents you want to run these and you only have a few real options. In the first row you kinda always want to run Searing Touch unless the boss is going to lack the execute phase. You only have one boss in the newest trade with the situation like this and that's Anduin. But you can still run Searing Touch on him, it's good if you need the help with the last 10% HP. In 6th row you want to run Conflagration on solo targets and as soon as there is more targets I'm going to run Flame Patch. Conflagration is quite an underwhelming talent but it's the only one in this row which can do some damage on pure solo target fights. In the last row we have two options and those are Kindling and Pyroclasm. If you're playing Ventir you always want to go with the Pyroclasm. For Night Fae guys it's a matter of preference if you want to go for Pyroclasm or Kindling. 95% of the player base will choose Pyroclasm on solo target situations. Kindling seems slightly better than Pyroclasm, but the majority of players on Warcraft logs are running Pyroclasm. Kindling gets ahead of Pyroclasm with more targets. So if the boss has more targets, you will definitely see more Night Fae players and more players will be running Kindling. Conduits are quite static for Fire Mages. You always want to run Infernal Cascade and Covenant Conduit no matter the situation. Now depending on the content that you're doing, you want to run Control Destruction or Master Flame. Control Destruction is the go-to conduit for the whole raid and you can run it for tyrannical mythic weeks and some dungeons where there isn't a lot of mobs. While you will run Master Flame on AoE and when you have fortified weeks in mythic plus. Covenants and Soulbinds. We have two best Covenant options for all types of content, Ventir and Night Fae. For solo targets you can go with either one and you will have a good amount of success. Personally I prefer Night Fae for solo targets until we get the double legendary power. With double legendary power Ventir should have a bit stronger DPS on solo targets. Ventir mages also have a better scaling with power infusion than Night Fae fire mages. And that's why you will see a huge number of Ventir fire mages as top locks since all of them are getting fed with power infusions. With more targets the power of Night Fae Covenant rises and they will be a better option in multiple target fights. Bottom line I think that overall Venture should be stronger than Night Fae when you get double legendary power on solo targets with or without power infusion. Just to shortly touch on ideal soul binds, Dreamweaver is the best option for Night Fae and she has an inbuilt cheat death. As for Ventir, you want to run Teotar, but if you manage to get your T on cooldown without having a buff, Naja is also a decent pick. Legendary powers are super easy for fire mages, you're always running Sun King's Blessing in the raid. The only exception can be Anduin, where you can pad a lot with disciplinary command, but I don't recommend it. For Mythic Plus, it's nice to run Sun King's Blessing in dungeons where there isn't a lot of trash and on tyrannical weeks. Otherwise, I recommend running Disciplinary Command. Stats. By far the most important stat is Intellect. 
That's why I want to focus on getting higher item level items. For my character, I'm stacking haste, my second most important secondary stat is versatility, then mastery, and lastly critical strike. Take these with a grain of salt of course, and always run top gear simulations for your item pieces in different fight situations. Rotation and opener. Rotation and opener hasn't changed that much since the last patch. Two tier set doesn't really make a difference, and double legendary isn't gonna make any difference in rotation. The only difference is when you get a 4 piece set. Your combustion window gets easier, it's as if you have memory of lucid dreams from the last expansion, but you still want to start combustion with a good amount of fire blasts. I will demonstrate the opener and rotation with the full set. Double legendary will minimally change the rotation for Ventir. You'll just be able to do more Mirrors of Torment before your second combustion. And you still want to pair Mirrors with the combustion. I won't bother you with demonstration without the set, since there hasn't been any changes to Fire Mages, and you can click on my two latest Fire Mage guides, on how to properly DPS with Sun King's Blessing as Ventir and Night Fae without the 4 piece set. Now let's start with the Ventir solo target DPS rotation. Ideally you want to be getting power infusion as Ventir, the DPS boost is just insane. That's why all the top 50 fire mage logs have power infusion. You're starting with mirror images on pre-pull, followed by pyroblast precast. Counting that pyroblast didn't critically hit on pull, you will do mirrors of torment, plus fireblast near the end of the cast. After that you're doing fireball, and at the end of that fireball you cast combustion together with a fireblast. Now you pump your potions, racials, trinkets, time warp, whatever you have on you. Then you want to do the following combination of spells. Pyro into pyro plus fire blast into another pyro plus fire blast, pyro plus fire blast into pyro. You're doing three fire blasts instantly because all of the haste you have with time warp. If you don't have time warp on the pull, just exchange one of those fire blasts with phoenix flames. The reason behind this is that we don't want to overcap our fire blast stacks with the crazy cooldown reduction caused by Mirrors of Torment. After the crazy start, you will go with Phoenix Flames, Pyroblast, Fireblast, Pyroblast, Phoenix Flames into Pyroblast. Whenever your Rune of Power expires, just cast a new one and maintain your Infernal Cascade buff. You will have 2 seconds of combustion left when you get a new Rune of Power. And ideally you want to pop another Pyroblast in and start hard casting a new Pyroblast which will start your Sun King's Blessing. During the hard cast of Pyroblast and at the end of your combustion, use Fireblast to maintain the uptime of Infernal Cascade even into the new mini combustion. You will only be able to do this with Time Warp or Power Infusion. So keep that in mind and in mini combustion you're just using the remaining Fire Blasts and Phoenix Flames if you have it. At this point of Shadowlands we got our combustion on steroids since we'll have a lot of combustions and start of the fight. After that mini combustion you're gonna end up at 6, even 7 sunking blessing stacks and then just do a few more fire blasts for a new mini combustion. After that point just keep casting that fireball and save up a bit of your fire blasts for the next mini combustion. The rotation really becomes super easy after the crazy opener. Now there is another RNG involved into all of this and that's your pyroclasm proc. Whenever you get it during your combustion and you can fit a hard cast pyroblast into your combustion, you should just use it. It does an insane amount of damage and it may even instantly put you into your next mini combustion. So if you get pyroclasm proc during your combustion, use it. Another tip is that during the rotation is to wait with your pyroclasm proc. You want to start a mini combustion with it, but that's not always going to be the case. Ideally you will be waiting with pyroclasm proc until there is like 4 seconds left on it. If you have 2 pyroclasm procs, just start the mini combustion with one and instantly start casting another one during your combustion. This opener and every other one requires a lot of practice and it gets more hectic with more haste. That's why you should definitely train it. It's giga fun, but it takes some skill to pull it off.
Alright, since we're done with this rotation, let's go to Night Fae for solo targets. The opener is super similar to Ventir one, you're opening with Fireball and Double Fire Blast. One thing to note is if you're using Time Warp at pull, you want to extend your Infernal Cascade buff into the mini combustion phase. The opener should look something like this. Pre-pull mirror images into pre-cast Pyroblast. After the Pyroblast you start casting Fireball and mid-cast you pop your Combustion and double Fire Blast. Followed by Potion, Racial, Trinket Usage and Pyroblast Pyroblast. Fireblast, Pyroblast, Phoenix Flames, Pyroblast plus Fireblast into Pyroblast. Continue doing one Pyroblast with Fireblast, then one with Phoenix Flames. In Time Warp situations you can do Pyroblast, Phoenix Flames, Pyroblast, Phoenix Flames, Pyroblast and then finish it up with Fire Blast. And your Infernal Cascade should still be up. 10 seconds into your combustion you start casting a new rune of power followed by shifting power. You should use Fire Blast spam so you don't overcap your Fire Blast stacks. Then do one or two more Pyroblast depending on your haste followed with hardcast pyroblast and in the last moment of your combustion use another fire blast to extend the infernal cascade buff. Again this only works if you had time warp at start. You get a new mini combustion and now you should just maintain the infernal cascade buff and try to fit as many pyroblast as you can. You will probably have to use scorch at this point in the mini combustion and after this insane opener you're starting to hit the boss as a wet noodle which is a typical thing for fire mages. And as always if you're running pyroclasm and you get a pyroclasm proc, you should use it the same way as if you went here. Your second combustion should be ready at 50 seconds into the fight, even sooner if you have good amount of fire blast stacks and you started your pull with time warp. During your second combustion you should use your shifting power if it came off cooldown. If you're running Pyroclasm, your second combustion happens at 1 minute and 30 seconds. Two demonstrations are now in order, they're not gonna be anything special.
For AoE, I recommend that you start using Disciplinary Command at 4 targets. Up until that point, you can use Sun King's Blessing and just blast the primary target for the cleave damage. At 4 targets, I would focus on pure AoE with Flame Strike openers. There isn't a fight in the raid where this is the way, except maybe Anduin. But those players are just padding adds, which don't do a lot, and those adds will pretty much die passively. So overall, you will only be using this build in Mythic Plus situations, and the opener should be something like this. So you're running towards the pack, and you're starting the pack by precasting mirror images or arcane explosion into Frost Nova to activate disciplinary command, followed by Flame Strike hardcast. At the end of that Flame Strike cast, you pop combustion and two fire blasts. Then pop your potion, racial, trinket together with Flame Strike. Then follow it with Fire Blast and Phoenix Flames into Flame Strike. At this point, you can use another Fire Blast and Phoenix Flames into another Flame Strike, followed by Shifting Power. Make sure that you never cap your Fire Blasts, even though that may mean that you will have to cast three Fire Blasts during your Shifting Power. After Shifting Power is over, you're instantly going with Flame Strike, followed by two Fire Blasts into another Flame Strike and finish it with Phoenix Flames plus Fire Blast into Flame Strike. You'll be able to do one more Phoenix Flames and Fire Blast into Flame Strike. Whenever you run out of Phoenix Flame and Fire Blasts and you still have your combustion running, just do Scorches for the quick Flame Strikes. We'll have one more Rune of Power and Disciplinary Command proc before the next combustion. Shifting Power should be saved and always used together with combustion. And here's a small demonstration. Mythic Plus situation. Fire mages are looking decent in Mythic Plus compared to all mage specs. On Tyrannical Weeks, you're running Sun King's Blessing, and on Fortified Weeks, you're blasting with Disciplinary Command. The only other mage spec which is giving them run for their money is Frost. In my humble Mythic Plus opinion, I'm currently only doing plus 18, plus 19, plus 17 keys. I feel that Frost is better than Fire Mages on Tyrannical Weeks. The difference will be greater with the double legendary power. But for fortified weeks, I enjoy playing fire more than frost at this moment. But I will be getting bigger numbers with frost in fortified weeks as well, thanks to the two piece set, which is just insane for frost. Overall, we're still quite needed in Mythic Plus department, even though some classes will put better DPS numbers than us. And that's it for this video. It got out more than a week later than I planned. Sadly, sickness doesn't ask you about your plans. I hope that you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and informative. I purposely didn't want to create this video into a super long one with all the possible outcomes. I could have covered time warp pulls, pulls when you get critical strikes with pyroblast pre-pull, but ideally you want to learn something yourself. And my tips are certainly going to be helpful. And as always, if you're struggling, there's always Patreon and coaching. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.